Happy days. Whoa, happy days. Let me, uh, let me bless you. Let me bless you. I want God to help you. I want God to meet with you. I want God to guide you. And so I'm going to start with blessing you. I bless you now in the name of Jesus, that you would know Jesus more wonderfully. I bless you to receive healing if you need healing in your body, in your mind, in your emotions, in your spirit. I bless you to receive the guidance from God that you seek, the help from God that you need. I bless you to flourish and prevail whatever your challenge is. And I bless you to feel hope, to feel peace, to feel love, to feel joy even, no matter what's going on in your life. I bless you with that in the name of Jesus. May it be. Amen. Amen. All right, welcome back to our Jesus series where we're talking about Jesus and what, we're, or what it is to believe in Jesus and what it is to follow Jesus. Today, I have such good and hope-filled words for any of us who know what it is to feel defeated or completely stuck and enslaved in some sort of sin and temptation. If you know what it is like, I have good news for you. You can be free from whatever's been besetting you. You can be victorious. You can overcome. Now, I know some of you are like, uh, you don't know how stuck I am or how enslaved I am. I know for some it just feels very impossible to believe today, but stick with me. We're going to talk about Jesus. We're going to look at how he overcame very strong temptation and how we can follow him in that and how we can work towards over overcoming our temptation. So that's, that's where we're going today. But first we're going to start with some pictures because it's Rehope, right? So i uh, got a Google Earth snap for you showing you basically where we are at today in, in our study. Uh, the blue circle, the blue circle represents the approximate area where Jesus is baptized. Not only do we not know exactly where he was baptized, the, the, you know that the Jordan River, it moves around, it wiggles around, like very extreme ways throughout the Rift Valley, uh, even in, e over the years. It kind of hits different channels, right? So, so it's somewhere in this area uh, Jesus was baptized. From his baptism, he goes straight to the wilderness, which is the blue, air, blue box area. Jerusalem is there circled in red, just so you can have a sense. You can see Jericho's oasis. It's kind of a dark green blob there, Jericho. Um, the, the yellow road, what is that? It's a patriarchal highway. I know. It's amazing. The only north-south road in, 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 in all the land. Wow, that is so great. You guys remember everything I ever said. Okay, so we, we are in the blue box area. What does that look like? Here's a picture of the blue box area. It's awful. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a dry well, it's a, it's a wilderness. It's, it's a wasteland. Not much grows out here. There's no towns because there's not any water. I know every time people tell me, hey, Jesus only had water while he's fasting, I'm like, yeah, okay, but where did he get it? <laughs> like, 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 where did he get it? I mean, uh, I'm sure he had water. He, you know, who knows? But, like, but like, there's nothing out here. There's a little bit of sparse bits of grass. This is winter. This is the rainy moment, and you can see all the sparse there's not much. Uh, shepherds are out there leading their sheep around, but it's, it's a wilderness. I've been there. I took this picture. It's, it's just awful. Right? It's, it's awful. It's not a place where you want to spend a lot of time. If you have ever been in a season of life where you have felt tormented by temptation, where you felt like bombarded with it, where you felt lost to it, where you felt overwhelmed by it, it can feel like this. It can feel just like this. And like this picture, it looks like the wilderness just can go on forever. And, and ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. But the good news is the wilderness does not go, in, go on forever. Now you can sit in it forever, but it does not go on forever. There is an end. And what we want to learn today is how do we get out how do we get out of the wilderness season to uh, the season of overwhelmedness by temptation, of extreme temptation? How do we get out of the season of, of just being bombarded and failing and defeat in, in, when it comes to temptation and sin towards victory? That's what I want to talk about today. Uh, now, I want to be clear. 
that Jesus is in the wilderness, but he is not giving in. He is standing, right? He is, not, he is overcoming. He is not overcome by temptation. He is overcoming. He is victorious. Uh, not only a great example, but very key in our salvation. Uh, we will talk about that at a different time. But he, he stood strong. He resisted. And so he got out. He got out. L let's look at it. Uh, Matthew chapter 4. There's a verse or two about this in Mark. There's several verses in Luke, but we're going to look at the Matthew passage here when it comes to Jesus and his temptation. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, uh, sorry, Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 1, Abraham, Jesus. Oh, I don't know, that's just genealogy. Uh, Matthew chapter 4. Then Jesus went, uh, was led, he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted for the purpose of the divine Holy Spirit leading purpose of being tempted by, by the devil. Now, stop. Um, as much as it depends on you, lead yourself not into temptation. You know, don't, don't, don't just, if there's areas or places that, that tempt you, just, just don't go there. Stay away. If you find yourself in an area that where temptation is strong, just, just get out of here. Lead yourself not into temptation. It's not in the Bible. It just sounds like it because I said it that way. Um, but here we see sometimes, sometimes God intentionally we see this in other places in the Bible as well. Intentionally leads people into temptation. He, in, he intentionally does at times where he wants you to be tempted. He wants you to be extremely tempted because he wants to test you. To see what is in your heart. To see if you're ready for what's next in your life. If you're ready to be led into the next era, the next season. Now, I want to make an important clarification here because the, the devil is tricky and, and, and twisted. And he, and he likes to make us all, all feel guilty even for things that we shouldn't feel guilty about. It, do not feel guilty for being tempted, even extremely tempted. There, there's, th that is not a sin. Jesus is not ashamed. The Bible is so clear. He was tempted. He was, it, it says in Hebrews, like he was tempted in every way. Like, it, it, don't be ashamed of being tempted. So the devil wants you to be ashamed of your intensity, of your feelings of being tempted so that you keep your mouth shut. And you don't bring it into the light. And you don't get help. And you don't get prayer. And he's just like, no, be ashamed. Don't be ashamed that you're being tempted. Go to war. What matters is that you stand in that moment. And that's what we're trying to figure out. How to stand. How to resist. How to stand strong on the evil day. Well, let's keep looking here at Jesus and the temptations he goes through. It says this in verse 2. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Then the tempter approached him and said, If you are the Son of God... Tell these stones to become bread. He, Jesus, answered, it is written, man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Okay, when, when you're tempted, I suggest asking yourself these questions. What is the lie? What is the fear? What is the pull? What is the lie? What is the fear? What is the pull? The first thing that will help us eventually overcome the temptation is to get the heart, get to the heart of our hearts. What, what, is, what is it that is, what, what is it that's going on here? What is the lie? What is the, what is the fear? What is, what is the pull? And this first temptation, there's a lie, there's a twisting here, there's a challenge to what is true. And it starts with the word if. The, the, the tempter comes to Jesus and says, if, if. You are the son of God. If, of course he is. Of course he is. He's just been baptized. The spirit is filled. John the Baptist has testified. You know, the, 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 there's the voice. There's the, the voice. Uh, uh, this is my son. Right? Like, uh, there, of course he is. It's, I mean, that was 40 days ago. And the last 40 days have been pretty awful. 40 days ago, there was that very obvious, of course you're the son of God. God declared it, but th these lousy days. And now, and now the enemy is like, you know, hey, you know, let's, let's, you're hungry. You've been in the wilderness for these last 40 days. It, shouldn't, this, shouldn't, it, shouldn't life be better if you're the son of God? If you actually are? I, if you're the son of God, you know, let, let me do something, prove it, you know, sh show, sh show, show it. Or, you know, are, are you sure you are who God says you are? 
If you are, then things would be better, and you can just turn, the, turn these stones into bread. The enemy feeds you with the same sort of lies. If, if, if you are loved by God, if God really does love you, why is your life like this? If God cares, if God sees you and cares, why, why, why is your life, why are you hungry? Why are you lonely? Why are you unhappy? Why are you, why are you struggling? Why are, why are you unsuccessful? Why are, why are these bad things happening? Why is your life not going very well? If you're really loved and seen by this God of the Bible, why is your life like this? At the heart of temptations is a direct assault on what God has said about you and who you are and how he thinks of you. You are precious. You are dearly loved. You are chosen. You are holy. You are, you are made clean. You are forgiven. You are blameless. You, you have been called, adopted, set free, picked, cherished, adored, helped. Like, like there, there's... There's, there's all these truths in the, in the Bible where, where God says how he feels about you and, and how attentive he is and how much he's paying attention in the good way. And yet that wicked deceiver comes along to our lives and says, if, you know, if God really does see and care and know and love you, wh why is your life like this? He challenges that. That sneaky lie, if, if, if. If, like the lie is to not trust what God has said about you. Can you really trust what the Bible says God says about you? Look at your life situation. You're in a wilderness. A wilderness. A wilderness. If you want to get better at fighting against temptations in your life, tip number one about overcoming temptation is believe with certainty. With certainty. You are who God says you are. Believe with certainty. You are who God says you are. More important than eating is believing every word that has come from the mouth of God. Jesus just quoted that. More important than, 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 than eating is believing what God has said and believing what God has said about you. God says, this is my son to Jesus. He says to you, you are my son. You are my daughter. You, 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 Jesus says to you, I am with you always. You're not alone. I am with you. I am with you. I love you. I forgive you. We're family. If you want to get better at fighting against the temptations in your life, Believe with certainty that you are who God says you are. Uh, one more thing. What is the lie? What is the fear? What is the pull? There's a powerful pull here, right? Jesus is hungry. Okay, there's a pull. pull a pull towards, towards food. And, and the devil tempts him to make, make, make bread. Why be hungry? Why, why keep fasting? One of the enemy's common temptation tactics is to get us to be obsessed about our immediate feelings, wants, and desires. What, what are you obsessed about right this second? Who cares about the big picture thing of God in your life and, and all holiness and all that kind of stuff? What are you obsessed about now? Like, what seems so important to you now? You're hungry. Let's act on that. You're angry. It's okay if you act on that. You're, you're, you're full of lust. Let's act on that. Let, you know, wh whatever the case may be. It's like, this is how you feel you're hurt. Respond. You know? Oh, it, it's, not, it's not bad if you hurt someone because you're hurt. That's totally fine. I should come up with a better word than that. It's amazing how primal drives are just used to manipulate us into simple disobedience, the, the urgency of, of the moment. Jesus is hungry, and yet he knows his Bible. He knows his Bible, and he quotes from, from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, and, and sure, he could eat, but he understands exactly why he is not eating and why he's in the wilderness and why the Spirit of God has led him actively into this wilderness temptation season. He knows why. I know that he knows why because of the context of the verse he quotes in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8. He is thinking about this, and, he, and he's very aware of this. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 Carefully follow every command. It's verse 3, by the way, that Jesus quotes here. I'm giving you today 
so that you may live and increase, may enter and take possession of the land the Lord swore to your ancestors. Remember that the Lord led you, oh, he's been led here, led you on the entire journey for these 40 days, 40 years, 40 days, 40 years, in the wilderness. He's in the wilderness. This is in his mind as he's getting ready to quote this verse, that God's led you these 40 years in the wilderness. Here's why. So that, this is why, he might humble you and test you. I've already alluded to this already. To know what is in your heart. This is why Jesus is hungry, to test you, to know what is in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. That is why Jesus is weak. That is why he's hungry. That's why he's being tempted, because God is wanting to test to see whether or not he will keep his commands. He does, by the way. It's good news. And then it goes on, he humbled you, letting you get hungry, so that you would, you know, learn that, basically, that man does not live on bread alone, which is what he quotes but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Small picture, Jesus is hungry. And the answer is for him not to eat. Not to make bread. More important than food, more important than whatever his cravings might be, is passing the test. In seasons of temptation, that is more important than acting on anything. It's passing the test, the test that shows God what is actually in our heart. You can see examples of this all through the Bible, including the book of Job. is very obvious. But it's passing the test whether or not we will keep his commands, even when we're tempted not to. To follow Jesus, which is what we're setting out to do, is to be someone who chooses to follow the commands of God no matter how intense or immediate our, our, our desires might be for other things. It's what it is to follow Jesus, to follow in his ways. That's the f- first temptation. But then what? Then, verse 5, the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple. They've actually found it recently. Um, I always imagine the pinnacle being like this, like, tower that's supposed it's it's the corner it, on the very corner of the wall i had a picture i deleted it i because i'm not going to mention it uh, uh on the very corner of the wall overlooking jerusalem there's a little area where the trumpeter was sound it was the pinnacle of the temple big fall off the wall anyways i'm not i'm not going to mention it so had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and he, and said to him if you are the son of god Throw yourself down, for it is written, he will give his angels orders concerning you, and they will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus told him, it's also written, do not be stupid. No. But basically, do not test the Lord your God. Okay, what is the lie? What is the fear? What is the pull? The lie is, if, is this. If you can put a verse on it, it must be true. If you can pull out something in the Bible that that justifies an action or a behavior or a way of thinking, if you have verses for it, or a verse for it, or a couple verses, you have a whole chapter, really. I mean, if you read Psalm 91, it's a whole chapter. If you have something there that can justify what you're thinking or your behavior, then it must be totally great with God. Ignoring all the rest of the Bible that says, uh, you know, gives you more of God's heart. It's a huge reason why here at the church we read all of the Bible over and over and over again. If you're new here, welcome to reading the Bible over and over and and over again. It's great. It's life-changing. You'll love it. Anyways, uh, but knowing the big picture of the Bible... Knowing, knowing its context, knowing the stories. Jesus is quoting from one verse, but he's very aware of the context around it in Deuteronomy chapter 8. N- knowing that, knowing the whole of the Bible helps us avoid, I've got this verse that justifies my behavior. Jesus' response, Deuteronomy chapter 6 here, don't test God. Again, the context there is so that you make him upset. And angry. The Bible does invite us to test God in certain ways. In the book of Malachi, uh, test him with our offerings. Maybe the book of Judges, chapter 6, testing God in uh, discernment processes. Like, God, is this really what you want me to do? But not to test God by needlessly putting yourself in harm's way by pulling out a verse of the Bible and acting on it uh, wrongly. Overcoming temptation 
tip, knowing the whole of the Bible and the heart of God. Knowing the whole of the Bible and the heart of God. I mean, seriously, jump off the pinnacle of the temple because of Psalm 91? Yeah, there's a verse. No. Okay, third temptation, verse 8. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, I will give you all these things if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus told him, go away, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. What is the lie? What is the fear? What is the pull? Maybe the fear here, maybe it's pain. Maybe it's fear of pain. Well, I mean, Jesus, when he rises from the dead, oops, I gave it away. He's going to be crucified. He's going to rise from the dead. It's great, great news that it's coming up. But, but like he's, when he rises from the dead, ultimately he's going to be hailed as king of kings, lord of lords, uh, the, the victorious one over sin and death. It, 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 it's going to be amazing. It's great. But between this temptation moment and that moment, there's the cross, there's torture, there's rejection. The fear of pain can cause so many people to shortcut, to, 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 to succumb to temptation in order to avoid it. It'll be worth it to avoid that pain. No, no it won't. No it won't. Don't believe that lie. That's, that's the enemy right there. It will be worth it to avoid that. No. What, the, what's the pull? I mean the pull could be no more waiting. You're going to have this someday. Someday, you're going to be king of kings and lord of lords. Why wait any longer? Why, why, why not just speed up the process by years? Years! No more delays. Overcoming temptation, you got to trust the plans and timings of God, guys. You have to trust the, the plans and the timings of God. Impatience with waiting or, or fear of pain or whatever, the enemy is going to torment you with that all the time, all throughout your life, afraid of, of uh, and wanting to avoid this or, or rush that. It, 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 you can trust God, though. You can trust God. You can trust Him with your future. You can trust Him with the path to your future. You can trust Him at the timings. You can trust Him to get you where He wants you to go, when He wants you to go, but you've got to trust Him, and you've got to trust Him today, and you've got to trust Him with your today. I'll just tell you straight out, you you don't have much hope in being successful at resisting temptations if you don't actually trust God with your life and with how it flows and how it goes and the timings and your future and how it will unfold. If you can't trust God with, with that, you're in for a whole lot of tricks and deception. You, you can trust God. You can do this. You can trust God. God can be trusted. Okay, now, I know that wilderness seasons can seem endless, and you can feel so stuck, and you can feel so hopeless, but check out this last verse when it comes to temptation. It says this in verse 11. Then the devil left him, and angels came and began to serve him. If you resist, temptation does not last forever, Christ. If you resist, temptation does not last forever. James 4, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Hold that verse out to God. Temptation does not last forever if you resist. If you just sit in it and, and just, just don't do anything, then you're not going to go anywhere because you're just sitting in it. But if you resist... Overcoming temptation, resisting temptation, uh, overcome, uh, standing firm is always, always possible. It's always, always worth it. Look at this from 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Uh, you might want to memorize this, this verse if you're if, well, in one of those places in life. It says, no temptation has come upon you except what is common to humanity. Okay. But God is faithful, and here it is. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Oh, let me just hit that again. He, God, 
the faithful one, will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to bear it. He will also provide the way out. Now, some of you are thinking about your situation or, or, or some of the situations where, where you think, there's no hope, actually, for me. There, there's no hope. I, I am completely destroyed by this sin and this behavior. I, if, if, if I even am slightly te- tempted, even, even the, the lightest hint of temptation in a certain area, I am a goner. I am complete. My willpower is completely broken in, in this particular area, and, and that's, that is possible for sure. I mean, Galatians 5.1, it's for freedom, you've been set free. Don't let yourself be burdened again by you know, slavery, that kind of stuff. You can be re-enslaved by partnering with the enemy over and over and over again in your life. And some of you have experienced that. And you're, and you're, and so I hear you about that broken, broken willpower and that stuck enslavement. But you can be free. But you can be free, and the question is, how do you get from completely broken to completely free? I would encourage you to start with a brutally honest conversation with Jesus. One of the things that I've realized recently is a lot of times people don't pray brutally honestly. They kind of like shade some things as if Jesus doesn't know it. It's time to have a brutally honest conversation with Jesus. And what does that look like? Jesus, forgive me, I am completely stuck. It is as bad as it is possible to be bad. I am completely, completely overwhelmed, completely weak and defeated by this sin. Every time I feel tempted by it, I fall. I fall every time. I hate it. I wish I did. I am broken in this area. My willpower is completely shattered. I have lost all hope that I could ever possibly be free from this enslavement. I am am stuck. Jesus, have mercy on me. Brutally honest. Help me. Honestly, Jesus, if you don't help me, I have no hope. Jesus, I ask you to be my mighty warrior, my, my strong defender, my, my, my strong tower. My, my, yeah, I, I ask you to decree, make a decree from heaven forbidding me to be tempted in this way because if I am tempted at all, I, I just keep falling. Lead me not into temptation. Deliver me from this evil. Protect me. Put a, put a protection around me in this area of te- temptation so that I can at least have a chance to start growing again and becoming stronger in this area to, so that I can someday re- resist, but protect me so that I can rebuild my, in my brokenness. My only hope, Jesus, is for your forgiveness, yes, but also my only hope is in you for my freedom from this deep enslavement. I'm sorry. You set me free. I re-enslaved. I've been, I've been, I've been stuck in this for, for a long time. I need you to help me out. Provide for me the way out. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, if you're listening. He is. Bringing your temptation in the light and bringing it in the light with Jesus, with with yourself and Jesus, that's very powerful stuff. If you want to take the next step, you get somebody who, uh, who knows how to pray and you say, look, I am completely stuck. Oh, I could never say that. I'm mortified. You're tempted. They are too. They won't tell you this. I'll tell you. They, they're, they've got their own stuff. Like, the, like you, you bring a temptation to them. There's something powerful about confessing your sins, bringing them into the light, and just saying, okay, I've been tempted. And then asking them to pray for you and to break off the enemy footholds that he has on your life. If you are enslaved, the enemy has its grip on you in such a powerful way. That needs to be confessed and broken off. And they can do that. They can do that for you. Anyways, that's just extra bonus. I love Jesus. I love the forgiveness thing. But also one of the things I love about Jesus when it comes to sin, and we can get tricked here. But one of the great things about Jesus is that he understands. 
He understands, and because he understands, he has great compassion and sympathy. Listen to this from Hebrews chapter 4. He says, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with us in our our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, this is the application of believing that Jesus understands. Let us approach the throne of grace with boldness. I know that so many people, when they feel broken by their sin, approach the throne of grace with extreme doubt. God, he, he, he must just despise me, tolerate me at best. No, 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 no. Jesus understands, and therefore we can approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need, in our time of brokenness, in our time of sin, in our time of enslavement. When it comes to temptation, Jesus sympathizes. He gets it. He cares. And because of that, he understands. Uh, so uh, then approach the throne of grace boldly to get the help we need. You can be free. Jesus is on your side. Jesus is on your side as you desire to escape whatever enslavement. It's probably going to start one, one moment at a time. You're probably going to be full of doubts because the enemy is going to be bombarding you with doubts. And you're going to have them in yourself. And, and it, it might look something like this. Jesus, I have no hope of falling to this sin today. But for this next hour, I say no. I will resist for this one hour. That's all I got. I can't, I can't, I can't hope more than that. Then you get to the next hour. Okay. Jesus, I'm being bombarded by this sin. I have no hope that I'm not going to fall today. But for this next hour, I say no. And you just step by step, step by step. And Jesus, there's both forgiveness and very real hope. You can be free and and it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. We're out of time, but I'm not out of notes. So I'm going to, I got some pictures for you. (laughs) Bonus time with Brian Ingraham. Sorry, Laura. Uh, one more thing I want to say about temptation. You see these pictures here? These pictures are the, the four stories in a row that take place here. Uh, story one, the baptism of Jesus at the Jordan River, uh, top left. The temptation in the wilderness, uh, follow there. Uh, in the Jordan River, God's declaring, this is my son whom I love. It's an amazing God moment, right? Temptation, awful wilderness moment. Third story, this is Nazareth, Nazareth Ridge, where Jesus goes from his temptation moment to his hometown where they completely reject him and they are enraged and they want to throw him off a cliff, maybe that cliff right there behind me. They they are enraged. He's completely upsetting and and being rejected. They don't like what he has to say. And then the fourth picture, the next one, he goes to Capernaum by the sea. He starts calling fishermen to follow him, crowds. Crowds start following him, healing the sick, delivering people from the enemy. It gets so, so intense that he gotta wa- he's got to go from place to place. The crowd's just coming from everywhere. His ministry just, just takes off. And I'm just noticing the flow here with these four stories. <clears throat> An amazing God moment followed by this awful temptation, sin time in the wilderness. But, when, but Jesus <clears throat> wins his temptations when he's alone. He wins his temptations when he's in this secret place, when it's just him and the the wild animals. And because he shows to God that he wins his temptation, his severe temptations, in the secret, in the alone, in the wilderness, when nobody's around moments, then he gets to go and, and has this public chance. And then that public opportunity, he is also able to stand strong with that intense rejection. When his own hometown rejects him and, and are enraged, he's, he, he wins the battle in the secret places. Then he can win the battle in the public places. And then God says, okay, it's ministry time. Mass step forward in his, in his ministry. It's winning the battles, though, in the secret place sets it all up. Which of these pictures here captures your God moment. 
If you're in a wilderness <coughs> temptation season, it will not last forever if you fight back. If you fight back, it's going to be worth it when you win those secret battles. If you, then you can win your public battles and you can move on. Jesus says, follow me. Jesus allows his path to be written out in the scripture several times. This was his, his path from temptation to impact. So let's follow him. Let's follow him by battling in the secret places, overcoming that sin and temptation, moving us towards God entrusting us with our, our ministry future for our nation and for our generation. Challenge. A challenge is <clears throat> have a brutally honest conversation with God about your biggest temptation challenges and start your path towards freedom. Brutally honest. When you think you've been honest, go deeper. Try it. You can do your prayer, brutally honest prayer with Jesus, and then be more brutally honest. And then maybe a third pass, right? Really go for it. Let's, just, let's get this. Let's, let's get this. Let's start that path. Jesus, uh, you are the Savior. You are the one who forgives us of our sins. You are the one who, uh, you are the one who loves us and, and cherishes us and, and calls us by name. Jesus, you are the one who has been the perfect example of how to get from severe temptation out. Now help us. Jesus, I do declare freedom over all of us in the name of Jesus from, er, from, from the sins that keep entangling us and the, the sins that keep tripping us up. I declare freedom. I, I, I declare your help. Be our shield and defender against temptation. Help us to rebuild. Help us to be strong a, a, in the Lord. And, and, and God, Jesus, I, I ask for your mercy and your grace. We boldly run to you saying, have mercy Help us, set us free. We want to be free. Help us. I know you will, Jesus. Help us. In Jesus' name, amen.